Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and I'm excited to share with you another collab video where I worked with four other YouTube creators and we each created a Star Wars themed doll. So participating in the collab along with me are the host Anastasia Custom, HLE Crafts, My Minimon, and the Doll Fairy. Also extra special thanks to Ali Kazam who created the group photo. So I was really pumped to be a part of this collab because I'm a big Star Wars fan. Initially I intended on choosing Ahsoka Tano, one of my favorite characters. I've made a doll of her before and I was really itching to do another version. But at the same time of this collab I was commissioned to do this character by a super nice Thrawn fan who in fact does a great cosplay of this character. So I decided to hold off on Ahsoka for another time and focus on the commission of Grand Admiral Thrawn. He's a character created by Timothy Zahn, first appearing in his novel, Heir to the Empire, and his timeline lands right after the events of Return of the Jedi. He's since appeared in a series of books, comics, and video games, and I'm familiar with him from the Star Wars Rebels animated series, which I loved. Okay, as you may have seen by the thumbnail, what I wanted to focus on with this video is sharing how I changed the color of the doll, since this is something I think a lot of doll artists are interested in, but I'll also be showing some of the costume construction, making the accessories, and the face up. So I chose the Monster High doll Porter Geist because he had a face shape that I thought would work best for this character, and I knew I wanted to use this dyeing technique. I also grabbed a couple of the other dolls to dye blue while I was at it. So each time I do a collab, I like to share a special technique. Like with the last one, I showed how I use Warbla, and this time I'm showing you how I do this Ritz Synthetic dye technique to dye the doll blue instead of painting him with paints. With painting dolls, you struggle with chipping, especially at the joints, so this is a great alternative. So you have to get specifically this Ritz Synthetic dye. There's a couple of other brands of synthetic dye, but this is specifically, you want to get the synthetic dye if you're going to use this Ritz. It's not without its share of issues, but I've done this technique a couple of times, so I felt um, comfortable enough to share with you guys since I have worked out a couple of the kinks from that point. And if anybody else has done this before and you have any um, special techniques that you do, um, I'd love to hear it in the description or the comment section below. So first I heated up some water using an old pot and I used a little half over a little over half a gallon. The instructions say to get the water almost to a boil but not quite and then I poured a little over a, th a little over a third of the bottle of dye. Following the instructions on the bottle may go better for you but this is just how I did it. So I separated all the hands or the arms and the head, I separated as many pieces I, as I could with the exception of the hands on the girl dolls because they were a little small. I didn't want to lose them in the dye. But um, I separated them because I wanted to get into those uh, areas that are connected um, to get that dye all in there. So first I am doing the extremities because after, if you've done this before, you know that um, the extremities kind of turn darker before the rest of the doll. So I decided to do the hands and the arms individually and just dip dye them just very slowly and bringing them back out to kind of see where I was at. And as you can see, this is real time and they die very quickly. Sorry for the fog. <laughs> So onto the head, but luckily the head floats in the water so I don't have to hold on to it. But it um, it does dye pretty quickly so I just kind of, almost the same amount of time that it took to dye the arms. So I just want to, I think it may be a little bit longer. So I just dip it a little bit and check it. And of course using tongs that I use only for my dyeing. <laughs> So as you can see, and I'm sorry again for the fog, it was difficult to film this, but as you can see, it got pretty dark pretty fast. So onto the body, I found that with the, the male body, it died a little bit differently than the female body. Um, almost like the arms and the legs and everything died similar. Uh, the feet died very quickly, and unfortunately, since I couldn't take remove them, um, or can you remove men? Ugh, I don't think I've ever tried to remove a Monster High boy doll feet. I don't think you can remove them. But anyway, um, they died very quickly. And unfortunately, the feet were a lot darker than the rest of the doll. But you, you'll find that this you'll have a lot of inconsistencies, some blotchiness. Um, with the face, you can actually 
use a little bit of acetone to clean it off and smooth and, and even it out luckily because that dyes all the way through but with the rest of the body you don't want to use acetone afterwards because in some areas it will remove it. So my recording on that ended pretty quickly but I will show you the final result at the end and um, let me know if you have any questions on that dyeing technique in the description box below. Oh, after I finished dyeing them, I did wash it with soap and water, the pieces with soap and water, and just let them dry overnight. So here I'm just doing some costume construction. I'm just using like this sort of a linen fabric to in, in my patterns. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, this month is the month that I'll be releasing all of my current patterns. So those ones that I just saw will be uh, shared with you. So if you're in the $5 tier and above, um, you'll have access to all of my patterns. So I just felt like I had accumulated enough patterns that I felt comfortable sharing those. So I'm doing a um, something different. I usually, for accessories, only use Warbla um, because it's because of the um, sturdiness of it. Um, but in this time, I, I decided to try some fun foam, and I wasn't crazy about the results. As you can see here, uh, the paint chipped. So. Um, it, it's if I'm using fun foam and it it's going to be bent at one point or another I, I and if any of you have tried it and have a great technique for it please that would be great if you could share in the comment section below but I just find that warbla is gonna stay um, not chip and break like the fun foam so um, I did use the fun foam for his badge because that wasn't going to be bent and I did seal it with Mod Podge so I think it, um, I tested it, it was pretty sturdy. But for the belt I'm using Warbla. If you want more details on how I use Warbla, um, I have a video, another collab video where I went into it a little bit more. And I'll put a link to that in the iCard above. So here's the badge. I, I guess I called it a badge, but I'm not really sure what it is. Um, but it looks like his his medals or something on his um, chest. And here, oh, I I used Mod Podge Dimensional Magic to give it more um, of a tough outer core. And I think that'll prevent any chipping or break if if it were to be bent. And I'm using this Fabri-Tac to, to attach it to the cloth. And that attached very nicely. For his um, like shoulder band things, and again for his belt, I did use Warbla for that since it was going to be at a curve um, that I thought that it would be a lot sturdier to use that, so I painted that up. For his gun, I actually used a toy gun that came with a cheap figure at the dollar store. I like to buy those every once in a while because they have some good little um, gadgets that go with them, and this was a gun that came with one of them, and I just used it as a base to mold on my epoxy sculpt to create a gun that looked more like Thrawn's. Once I let that clay dry overnight, then I painted it with like a sort of a dark gray and coated it with Mod Podge. So you can see the base really helps with uh, creating the ultimate or the main shape of the gun and then I can just add a little bit of detail and it's a lot easier to sculpt into what I want it to look like. I'm using some very small uh, clay sculpting tools. And then stay tuned to the end for the final looks and also the final photo or photo of the group 
and uh, uh, the fun group shot that I talked about earlier. <laughs> So Thrawn has red eyes, so to get started I was debating whether or not I wanted to do a layer of white first or red. I started with red and then I changed my mind. He's got about four coats of Mr. Super Clear at this point. So I erased the red and then started shaping the eyes with the white and then thought for a few minutes, is this really what I want to do? <laughs> and then ultimately decided that I do need a white base layer. So usually when I add the sealant, I do it um, th in three steps. And first is the initial four coats. And then once I have laid down like one layer of everything that I wanted to do um, at that, or wanted to save at that point, I'll give it another two coats of Mr. Super Clear. And then I'll do my final like five coats to seal it all off. Um, with this one, I probably sealed it about um, three more times in between. And that was one to kind of save the color that I was adding here. As you can see, I'm adding a little bit more turquoise to the blue. And I wanted to save that more often so I could build up those colors. And, um, and also because uh, the red just wasn't getting red enough. So I, I just needed to seal it more often. And when you seal it, each time you seal it, it builds up a little bit more tooth and makes the color pop a little bit better. So with the blue dye, um, I was mentioning earlier that you may want to use a little bit of acetone to kind of pull back the color a little bit and to even out the, the, the uh, dye that kind of accumulates in certain areas on the doll. Um, I can't use that acetone on anything else but the face. I think maybe the upper thigh on the female dolls, each piece is different. It's like it's a different kind of plastic and it takes to the dye in a different way. Um, the calves, if I were to use acetone on that, it would it would wipe off all that dye. So it's, it's, it's a really unusual process because in some, some areas of the doll, it really absorbs it and it goes all the way through, but in others, it's kind of just putting a, a layer over top of it. But either way, it's not gonna, it doesn't rub off, it doesn't um, chip off, it just will come off with acetone. So before I got started, I want to mention that I did uh, use acetone on the face to try to tone back or peel back that um, blue that was really super dark. It did take off a little bit. Um, and tone it down a little bit. You want to be careful with that though because on one of the dolls that I've done previously with this technique I did that on the face and I and I rubbed it off to that the the paint came off the nose Or the the dye came off the nose So it will peel it back all the way if you keep going But it will be blotchy in certain areas. I hope that makes sense. So anyway, I'm just doing some shading. I'm using my pan pastels and all, all of the supplies that I use are in the description box below. If you're new to my channel, the pan pastels are my go-to pastel. It's a professional grade pastel, but it's it's convenient, uh, conveniently in these little pans that I can just pick up the color from and they're nice and soft. So I'm using the white to add the highlights to the uh, kind of accentuated forehead eyelid thing that Thrawn has going on. So I did, se like I said, I did several coats of the um, color on this with several coats of sealant. And what I was doing with the uh, turquoise, I was just trying to lighten up in certain areas and highlight with the turquoise. I'm using a couple of different colors on the lips, mainly just like a soft pink. I'm using my Faber-Castell and Derwent, but also some Arteza. I recently did a, a video on review of Arteza uh, pencils, which are a much more reasonably priced uh, watercolor pencil. So if you're interested in saving some money and you're wanting to start customizing, that's a good option and check out that video, I'll put an I card above. So like I mentioned before, Thrawn has uh, red eyes, so, um, and I believe he's like described in the books of having, as having like bright red eyes. 
So I wanted to get them as red as possible and it was requested by the person who commissioned me to make sure the eyes were super red. I actually went back and added more red after the filming of this video, I believe. So they are a little bit redder possibly in the pictures. I really enjoyed working on this Thrawn custom. I, I like the details that went into his costume and I had fun playing with the dye. And like I said, I'm a little bummed that I didn't do an Ahsoka or an Amidala, but I really enjoyed seeing those that were done by my fellow collaborators. They were absolutely amazing, so check those out. Um, I've done a few other Star Wars dolls before, and I'll pop a video or a photo of them in here. Bef I'll pop a photo in here. And I did a... Um, uh, I've never done a Queen Amidala, which I really want to do, but like I said, I did an Ahsoka, a uh, Massage Ventress, and a Princess Leia, or two Princess Leias. And I just love Star Wars and I probably would want to keep any of the dolls that I make. I never keep any of the dolls, but I do have the, the dolls that I make, but I do have a collection of Star Wars dolls. <laughs> so I want to say thank you to my fellow collaborators. It was so fun working with you guys. Everyone make sure to check out the playlist in my description box below and make sure to watch those videos if you haven't already. So as you can see, it's been several, several layers of color on the face. At this point, I've probably given him, gone back like twice to do a couple of layers of sealant. I did his tear duct a little bit differently. Uh, color wise since and, and really just kind of made them white and you may be able to see that better in the pictures uh, I'll put those at the end like I said So I pulled out my Karandosh. If you've been watching my videos, you probably have heard me talk about the Karandosh watercolor pencils, Museum Aquarelle version. Uh, they are my absolute favorite pencils. They um, are super creamy. They really show up. Like if you're at a point that you're really struggling with the face up and that the sealant just isn't the working as well as you like, I pull out those Museum Aqua Rels and they really push me to the next level. They're just really, like I said, creamy and they build up color very well. So for the red, I did pull those out to try to make that red pop a little bit better. I've been asked a lot about my paint brushes and I've mentioned this in a few other videos, but I know it's hard to keep up with. All the little things I say in all the little videos but I, I do for my small brushes mainly I use a small round brush and then I cut it down to the point that it's like kind of like a stencil brush and that helps me do some of the smaller areas and there's his final face up his uh, some photo you'll, again you'll see some photos at the end of where I uh, brightened up the red in the eyes but that was mainly the final look like I said before, all the supplies that I use are in the description box below. If you're interested in a, in a commission, contact me by email at scariosities at gmail.com or by direct message on Instagram, Facebook, or Etsy. Um, I even have one more spot available uh, or one more commission spot open for July if you act fast. Also, check me out on Patreon where I've recently relaunched with a learning format where the $5 a month tier in particular gets you monthly game changers like... Uh, my patterns or business management uh, things like how I price my dolls, um, once one on one help sessions and critiques and close up step by step mini tutorials and even more. So check that out. And all of that's in the description box below. So if you guys like this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to check out the other videos of the collaborators and I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.